They aren't just printing parts anymore, they're printing atoms. At research labs from Switzerland to California, scientists are discovering ways to manipulate matter so precisely that hydrogen systems can literally be built one atom at a time. The field is called nanoprinting, and it could redefine how we design catalysts, electrolyzers, and energy materials for the clean hydrogen future. Instead of machining large metal plates or coating electrodes with layers of platinum, researchers can now place single atoms exactly where they're needed, sculpting performance at the most fundamental scale possible. If 3D printing changed manufacturing, nanoprinting might change physics, and it could accelerate the world's race toward cheap, efficient green hydrogen faster than any subsidy or policy ever could. To understand why nanoprinting is so revolutionary, we first need to remember what limits hydrogen technology today. Most of the energy loss in an electrolyzer happens at the atomic interface, where water molecules meet the catalyst and split into hydrogen and oxygen. Catalysts like platinum, iridium, or ruthenium make that process faster, but they're expensive and scarce. Manufacturers use nanometer-thin coatings to stretch those metals as far as possible, yet even that wastes atoms that never participate in the reaction. Every inactive atom is money lost and efficiency wasted. Now imagine if every single atom in the catalyst were active, perfectly positioned, perfectly bonded, perfectly exposed. That's what nanoprinting promises, total atomic control. In practical terms, nanoprinting refers to a family of emerging techniques that let scientists deposit, move, or assemble atoms with extreme precision. One method is called atomic layer deposition, where materials are built one monolayer at a time through controlled chemical pulses. Another is focused electron beam-induced deposition, which literally draws structures atom by atom inside a vacuum chamber. A third approach, nanolithography, uses light or scanning probes to sculpt surfaces at the nanometer scale. Together, these tools form the digital foundry of the future. Factories that don't just print objects, but print matter itself. Recent breakthroughs show how this atomic control translates into real performance. At ETH Zurich, researchers created single-atom nickel catalysts, dispersed on nitrogen-doped carbon supports using a nano-printing-style atomic deposition process. Their tests showed hydrogen evolution efficiencies rivaling platinum, but with materials a thousand times cheaper. At Oak Ridge National Laboratory, scientists used a scanning tunneling microscope to place individual cobalt atoms on a graphene lattice, forming active sites that break water molecules with record low energy input. Meanwhile, teams at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory are using electron beam lithography to craft nanochannels where hydrogen and oxygen evolve in perfectly separated microenvironments, eliminating cross-contamination losses that plague conventional stacks. Each of these experiments demonstrates the same principle. When you control the atom, you control the energy. The implications reach far beyond laboratory curiosity. Hydrogen is a chain reaction of industries, energy, manufacturing, mobility, and storage. Every percentage point of efficiency gained in electrolysis cascades into cost savings across the entire value chain. Analysts estimate that if atomic scale catalysts could cut over potential losses by even 50 millivolts, the global hydrogen industry could save billions of dollars per year in electricity costs. Nanoprinting isn't just another improvement. It's a step change that rewrites the cost curve from the bottom up. To visualize how this works, picture a traditional catalyst surface as a rough mountain range. Only the peaks of those mountains are active sites where water molecules can react. The valleys and slopes do nothing except hold material and block electrons. Nanoprinting flattens the landscape into a meticulously designed terrain, where every atom is a peak, every surface is active. The result is a catalyst that performs the same reaction with far less material, less voltage, and less heat. It's efficiency sculpted by design rather than discovered by accident. But nanoprinting doesn't stop at catalysts. Scientists are also building entire membranes and electrodes from the ground up with atomic precision. A team at Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology 
recently printed nanostructured perfluorosulfonic acid membranes with tuned ionic channels that improved proton conductivity by 40% while reducing crossover between hydrogen and oxygen gases. At Imperial College London, researchers used nanoprinted metal oxide frameworks to create electrode surfaces that repel bubbles, solving a long-standing problem where gas accumulation blocks reactions. Even water management inside the cell is being reinvented at the nanoscale, with nanochannels guiding molecules like highways instead of random rivers. The result? Faster reactions, smaller stacks, and lower costs. Now, imagine coupling these materials with AI-driven design. Machine learning models can already predict how atomic arrangements affect catalytic performance. Feed them millions of data points from nanoprinting experiments, and they begin generating new blueprints for materials that no human could invent. Within a decade, we might see AI-generated hydrogen catalysts, designed in silico and printed atom by atom in automated labs. Instead of trial and error, innovation becomes algorithmic. Hydrogen technology evolves at the speed of computation. This convergence of AI, nanoprinting, and hydrogen is sometimes called Materials 4.0, a term borrowed from the broader industry 4.0 revolution. It's about bringing digital precision to physical reality. The moment you can describe a material digitally, you can replicate it anywhere, in Zurich, Nairobi, or Melbourne, simply by sending the design file. That democratizes manufacturing and breaks the dependence on centralized supply chains. The same way 3D printers decentralized prototyping, nanoprinting could decentralize material science. A remote hydrogen startup could one day download an open-source catalyst design and print it locally using affordable feedstock powders. Innovation becomes borderless. Of course, printing at the atomic scale sounds impossibly delicate, but the technology is advancing quickly. Researchers at the University of Vienna recently demonstrated nano-inkjet printing of metal organic frameworks with 10 nanometer resolution. Their system can print thousands of catalyst dots per second, each optimized for a specific reaction. In Singapore, another team developed plasmonic nanoprinting, where lasers guide chemical reactions on a surface, assembling atoms only where light intensity peaks. These techniques are already being used to fabricate nanoscale transistors and sensors. Adapting them for hydrogen is simply the next logical step. As costs drop and instruments shrink, nanoprinting could move from clean rooms to compact production units the same way computing moved from mainframes to desktops. Let's bring this down to economics because the future of hydrogen is written in dollars per kilogram. The levelized cost of hydrogen, or LZOH, depends on electricity price, efficiency, and capital cost. Electricity is falling thanks to renewables. Efficiency is improving through better stack design. The remaining lever is materials. Nano-printed catalysts and membranes could cut stack cost by 30%, while extending lifetime beyond 50,000 hours. Combined with cheap solar or wind, that's enough to push hydrogen below $2 per kilogram, the threshold where green hydrogen competes directly with natural gas. In this sense, nanoprinting isn't just a manufacturing trick, it's an economic weapon. What makes the story even more compelling is sustainability. Traditional catalyst production involves toxic solvents, high temperatures, and heavy metal waste. Nanoprinting eliminates most of that because it deposits atoms only where needed waste generation drops to near zero. Some labs are even experimenting with bio-inspired nanoprinting using proteins or DNA scaffolds to assemble metal clusters under mild conditions. These approaches marry biology and nanotechnology, creating hybrid materials that are not only efficient but also environmentally benign. The same precision that saves money also saves the planet. Skeptics might ask whether this is practical beyond laboratory scales. That's a fair question. Scaling atomic precision sounds contradictory, but history suggests otherwise. Semiconductor manufacturing, which also manipulates atoms, scaled from research wafers to billion chip factories in less than two decades. The same trajectory could unfold for nano-printed energy materials as equipment matures. Already, startups are emerging to commercialize single-atom catalysts for industrial electrolysis. 
Their pilot lines operate at gram to kilogram scales, enough for early demonstration systems. Investors are paying attention because the technology sits at the intersection of two megatrends, clean energy and advanced manufacturing. The geopolitical implications are profound. Countries that master nanoprinting could leapfrog traditional industrial giants. You don't need massive foundries or rare metal mines. You need digital precision, clean rooms, and smart algorithms. A small nation with strong research infrastructure could become a global supplier of atomic-scale hydrogen materials. That redistributes economic power from resource-rich to knowledge-rich regions. For developing economies, it's a unique opportunity to enter the hydrogen race through brain power rather than brute infrastructure. Let's project forward 20 years. It's 2045. A hydrogen plant no longer orders stacks from overseas. Instead, it downloads certified digital blueprints for nanoprinted catalysts and membranes. Robotic printers build them on site using recyclable materials. AI monitors performance in real time and tweaks the atomic structure to prevent degradation. When a component reaches end of life, it's melted down, reatomized, and reprinted. A closed loop system of infinite reusability. The plant operates almost autonomously, consuming sunlight, water, and data to produce hydrogen at under a dollar per kilogram. The entire operation fits inside a modular container and can be deployed anywhere. That's not a fantasy. It's the logical endpoint of the trends we're seeing today. Even before that future arrives, Incremental benefits are emerging. Nano-printed electrodes can reduce activation losses, lowering voltage requirements by 3%. Single-atom catalysts are slashing precious metal loadings by 95%. Nano-structured membranes are doubling durability. Each small step brings green hydrogen closer to parity. When stacked together, literally and figuratively, these improvements compound into a revolution. It's worth pausing to appreciate how remarkable this convergence is. For centuries, humanity has extracted energy by breaking molecules apart, burning coal, oil, and gas. Now we're learning to create energy systems by assembling matter itself, one atom at a time. That philosophical shift mirrors our technological one, from consuming resources to constructing them. Nanoprinting symbolizes that transition perfectly, it's precision instead of pollution, design instead of depletion. Of course, challenges remain. Equipment cost, throughput, and standardization. Nanoprinting machines are expensive and slow, and maintaining atomic precision at industrial scale requires new metrology tools. But these hurdles mirror the early days of any manufacturing revolution. The first 3D printers were costly and niche. Today, they're affordable and ubiquitous. As demand for hydrogen materials grows, economies of scale and automation will bring nanoprinting along the same curve. Once the process is digital, improvement becomes exponential. For engineers, the most exciting part may be creative freedom. Nanoprinting lets them design entirely new phases of matter, alloys, composites, and crystal lattices that don't exist in nature. By adjusting atomic spacing or orientation, they can tune electrical conductivity catalytic activity, or corrosion resistance. It's like having a periodic table made of sliders instead of fixed elements. In hydrogen systems, that means materials perfectly tailored for each reaction. Oxygen evolution on one side, hydrogen evolution on the other, proton transport in between. When everything aligns at the atomic level, performance soars. Some visionaries talk about quantum-tuned electrolysis, where nanoprinted materials manipulate electron wave functions to reduce energy barriers. Early evidence from quantum simulation studies shows it might be possible. Others are exploring self-assembling nanoprinting, where chemical reactions guide atoms into place automatically, effectively materials that print themselves. These frontiers blur the line between manufacturing and chemistry hinting at a world where hydrogen systems grow like living organisms rather than being built like machines. For the broader public, nanoprinting will likely remain invisible, embedded inside devices and infrastructures. But its impact will be everywhere, in cheaper hydrogen trucks, cleaner steel, and longer-lasting energy storage. 
Every kilogram of hydrogen produced more efficiently is another step toward a net zero world. Every atom printed precisely is one less wasted from Earth's finite resources. So where does this leave us today? We stand at the threshold of a new discipline, atomic scale energy engineering. The tools are emerging, the economics are aligning, and the urgency of climate change is accelerating adoption. The same precision that once built microchips is now being repurposed to build the clean energy world. When future historians look back, they might say the hydrogen revolution truly began not when we built bigger plants, but when we learned to build smaller, all the way down to the atom. At ReneEnergy.com and H2Hub.ReneEnergy.com, we're tracking this transformation as it unfolds. We translate complex research into practical insight for developers, investors, and consultants who want to understand where technology meets finance. From feasibility templates to financial models, our goal is to help you design projects that anticipate these breakthroughs, not react to them. Because the hydrogen economy of tomorrow will reward those who see the invisible changes happening today. Nano printing the hydrogen atom isn't just a scientific milestone. It's a metaphor for the precision humanity now brings to its energy future. Every atom placed correctly brings us closer to sustainability by design. If 3D printing built the prototypes of the clean energy age, nanoprinting will build its foundations, invisible, perfect, and infinitely repeatable. And when the first commercial nanoprinted electrolyzer goes online, the world will realize that the smallest leap in scale can produce the biggest leap in history. Layer by layer, atom by atom, that's how the future of energy will be printed. To explore more about the technologies shaping this future, from 3D printed electrolyzers to AI optimized catalysts, visit h2hub.reneenergy.com. There you'll find professional grade tools, hydrogen project templates, and the latest intelligence on digital manufacturing, cost reduction, and investment trends driving the green hydrogen revolution. Because the next era of energy isn't extracted, it's designed, and it begins at the atomic level. Atomic 